Here we are, folks. It is that time once again. It is Classic Tabletop RPG Friday. Rolling right back into our new series on the Classic Traveler RPG. And we're only three videos into this thing. We've got a lot of movement in the comments and engagement. And you know, a brother is happy about that. Hey, if this is your first time coming to the channel, then I want to welcome you. My name is Servant of Shiloh. Yes, I am your servant. And how I serve you here on RPG Elite is by putting the RP back into RPG. And I do this in multiple ways. I do this by giving you tips and tools and tutorials and giving you the real talk that probably nobody else is talking about about the tabletop RPG space and the culture. And yes, when we get to these classic tabletop RPG series, these are just deep dives, tutorials about some of the best classic games out there. So let's roll right into this. On the other side, I've got a way for you to become involved in the mini adventure that comes at the end of this series. So stay tuned for that. And of course, as always, the question of the vid. So you know what we gotta do now, right? Let's roll them. One of the major elements in any science fiction setting is the presence of starships or spaceships. Able to traverse the vacuum of space between planets and galaxies, they are the major means of transportation and trade. However, because of the engineering required to make these vessels, in addition to what they are for, the economics and reference to their purchase is substantial. I'm talking about some major cheddar, y'all. Therefore, as we go through this particular part of the Traveler series, in terms of cost, we're going to be dealing in mega credits not just credits, and a mega credit is, you guessed it, one million credits. Just like today where most people acquire financing for their vehicles, an absolute waste many, many, many times, but I digress. Classic Traveler also has financing available for those who want to purchase a Starship. Since we're dealing in millions of credits, this means a bank has to be involved. The first requirement is the down payment, which is 20% of the full cash price of the Starship. Once a ship is constructed, the bank pays off the balance to the shipyard and the character becomes beholden to that bank, of course, with interest. This brings in that lovely thing that we call a monthly payment. These monthly payments are set at 1 240th of the final purchase price for 480 months. Yes, folks, that's correct. 40 years. Now, if Classic Traveler doesn't teach you anything, it will teach you the basics of how loans work in the real world. Because this can easily go past the lifespan of a character, the bank will want a plan, similar to a business plan, to know how this money will be paid back. If there's no plan, then there's no purchase. This is why it's a major boon when a scout or a merchant acquires a ship when mustering out. A player may get subsidies if they want to from the government if they have a 600 ton hull ship or larger. Those who do are assigned a specific route connecting anywhere from 2 to 12 worlds, which vary in makeup. This route is determined before the purchase of the ship so that anything the ship needs to complete this route will be included in the plans. The character still has to make a 20% down payment from their own pocket. Yeah, you ain't getting out of this unscathed. But in this situation, the government is going to actually pay off the ship and it's going to take 50% of the receipts while the ship is in service. The character will be responsible for all of the normal expenses and operations. Subsidized ships are also subject to mobilization, which is having their ships enlisted for service in case of governmental emergency, like a war or something like that. At the end of, you guessed it, 40 years, 
then the vessel is completely paid off title goes to the pc however if the ship is subsidized it still is subject to whatever need the government may have for it if something turns up even though the character owns it there are certain expenses that need to be considered when owning a starship in classic travel there are five major expenses for every ship in some cases there may be extra expenses for custom items that have been added to the vessel how the payment of these expenses will be handled is left up to the referee and the starship owner of course it should be done in a way that is either unobtrusive or will be part of the adventure itself for this part i'm going to use a character named marcus lebeau it's a 24 year old scout who was honorably discharged from the service and his story is forthcoming one of my guys created him recently i thought he'd be a great example since he mustered out with a scout courier ship fuel costs 500 credits per ton that's refined or premium or 100 credits per ton unrefined or regular at most starports for marcus's scout ship its 40 ton fuel tank will cost 20,000 credits to fill up with refined fuel or 4,000 credits with unrefined fuel. This can be mitigated by skimming a nearby gas giant. And we're going to talk about this later when we get into interplanetary travel or just travel in general. If there are occupied staterooms on a starship, each one will cost 2,000 credits per trip to maintain life support. The trip is about two weeks. This is assuming that there is one person to a stateroom. We have situations where there are two or more persons, let's say there's bunk beds in the stateroom, then you're just gonna add an extra 2,000 credits per person. A low berth passage, and that's just like a sleeping compartment only like when somebody's in suspended animation or something like that then that only has 100 credits per usage. Going back to our Marcus LeBeau example, his scout ship has four staterooms. At full capacity, it's gonna cost him 8,000 credits to maintain for a two week trip. It doesn't have any low berths, so there's no chance for some little petty Skrilla there on the side. Starships should go through a yearly maintenance to keep it in good working condition, and this should be broken up into a monthly expense. The total annual maintenance cost is one one thousandth of the price of the ship. The maintenance needs to be performed at a class A or B starport and usually takes about two weeks. Of course, there's no revenue coming in during those two weeks and the crew, if there is one, still needs to be paid. So all of this needs to be considered when maintenance is taking place. For LeBeau's ship, the cost is 29.43 mega credits. That means it will cost him yearly 29,430 credits. Monthly, this is going to work out to be 2,453 credits. Speaking of crew, if a ship has one, then they are to be paid a monthly salary. Then this is going to vary based on the ship, the size of the ship, the expertise of the crew members, and how many are needed for each. Now you can see here, and I'm going to make this a little bigger. There you go. And we'll move it over a little bit right here. So we got in the middle. All right, so here are the crew requirements. So these are, these are basic positions on the ship. So you got your pilot. They need to be paid 6,000 monthly. If it's over 100 tons, then they need a pilot of one or better. There's a navigator. There's an engineer. There's a steward, a medic, and a gunner. You can see the monthly salaries are for more importance or the one that gets paid the most to the one that gets paid the least. You do have a couple of situations down here, just special situations. Sometimes a crew member can fulfill more than one position. Now, if they do that, they're not as effective because they don't have their undivided attention on the skill that they or the job that they are there for. So 
their skill level is at a minus one for each one. Also, you still have to pay both of the salaries. You don't have to pay full salary. You just pay 75% of that salary if you are the one that needs to pay them. If there are other positions as well that need to be filled that is not on here, then you can go ahead and you can make up the details for that. And for really large ships or those over a thousand tons, then you're going to need a commanding officer, an executive officer, and at least three administrative personnel. They should have at least 10 crew members per 1,000 tons of mass displacement. So this is what you have when it comes to the crew. And depending on how many you got, it can get a little expensive. So if you're going in a situation with our scout courier, LeBeau's ship, it just requires a crew of one, and that's a pilot or an engineer, either one. And Marcus has pilot of one. If you want to go over here and check out Marcus's, and I think this is Andrew's second character, or is his first? Maybe it was his first character. It was his first character here. And as you can see, he has a pilot one. He has a scout ship and a pilot one. So he doesn't need that. He'll be good to go. And he has, uh, he can make a little bit of Skrilla since he mustered out with it. These costs are an amalgamation of handling expenses, landing fees, charges from facilities, and other various starport fees that may crop up as a ship docks at a starport. The average cost is 100 credits to land and then remain there for six days. Not bad. However, if you stay any longer than six days, the cost goes up exponentially to 100 credits per day. Depending on the port, the fee may be higher or lower. And sometimes, depending on the situation, it's eliminated altogether. So I've laid it out for you. Starship Economics and Classic Traveler. Now for some people, especially new kids, they're going to look at that and be like, oh, all that stuff. And see, and that's the kind of stuff I like. <laughs> I like that kind of stuff. There's realism, but you don't want the realism to get in the way of gameplay, right? But having that realistic element in the game, I don't know. I like it. I think it's cool. Now, I mean, hey, if you got any value out of this video today, or maybe you were entertained just a wee bit, can you do a brother a solid? Can you just go down below and see that thumbs that goes like this? Can you just crush the like button for a brother? Please. Also, if you like to stick around and be like, you know, I'm kind of digging this classic traveler series, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Also, if you want to become part of the mini adventure, that we will have coming up, it's planned somewhere around October, that kind of wraps up this whole series and lets people see how it all comes together in a session or mini adventure, then the best way to do it is to become part of the Leap Squad. Now you can do that by hitting the first link that's down in the description below. It's gonna take you to the landing page and right there, you're gonna see my ugly mug pointing down below Put your name and your email address in there, click that blue button, and you will become part of the Elite Squad. Now, you don't have to be part of the Elite Squad if you wanna do it. You can just go to my About tab here on YouTube and see my email and just send me an email. But I will say this, those in Elite Squad get first dibs. It's the way we roll here, folks, the way we roll. All right, question of the vid is this. I gave you two ways with the economics, right? There is financing and there's subsidies and far as getting the ship. So if you had an opportunity to get your own ship, which way would you use and why? Let me know down in the comments below. That is gonna do it for me, folks. I gotta slide on out of here and do the snaggle puss. So what's the If you got a game this weekend, like me, wondering y'all, happy gaming. I hope it is an RPG Elite session. And until the next time, go ahead and catch up on the Traveler videos if you haven't seen them. A brother has got to say,
Peace, 5,000 leaks. I am Audi.